Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. I have been putting up my six month inventory update videos. I've got two up, I've got two more to go, but I am interrupting the flow of those videos because I need to make a public commitment today. And that is that I am putting myself on an emergency no buy for the month of August. If you're totally new to my channel, then hi, my name is Roisin. I'm really glad that you're here. Over the last number of years, I have been doing different year-long projects, no buys, low buys, etc., to try and address my consumer habits. So I did my first beauty no buy in 2018, carried that through to 2019, did a complete no buy in 2020. 2021, I did a quantity controlled low buy. 22, I did a no buy with some exceptions. Last year, I did a complete no buy. You might have thought after all those projects that I would be back in control of things, but this year has proven absolutely not. So basically my intention for this year had actually been to do a budgeting project and I set myself up for failure right at the start because I didn't commit to that. I didn't like outline it, I didn't make rules, I didn't make it clear in my head. I just sort of had this very abstract, non-defined idea that I was going to do a budget this year. And I never made a video and told you guys about it and that when I do that that really helps me because I have to define it to make that video but I had to do like my inventories and you know I do my project pan updates and I sometimes feel like other content gets pushed back so the I had the intention of making that I'm going to do a budget this year video and it just kind of kept getting pushed back because I had content that was sort of time sensitive that I wanted to film and get up for you. So it just kind of kept getting put on the back burner and that meant that in real life it also kept getting put on the back burner. I didn't commit to it, I didn't actively think about it, I didn't make the the efforts that I need to make to stick to a budget because I, I didn't really ever bother officially setting the budget. I had it as an idea but I never committed to it. To bring you up to speed with where that has left me this year. I thought I would stick to a budget of £200 a month on what I was spending on fashion and beauty items. And I actually started off all right. In January, I spent £184. This was when I was still tracking this because I thought I would be talking to you guys about it at some point, sooner or later. Didn't think it'd be this much later, but here we go. So January, I actually started okay. I spent £184, so I was within my budget. And I think the thing is, for January, maybe... A, there was sales, so there was bargains, so I wasn't, I think most of what I bought in January was on some kind of discount, so I wasn't really spending the full RRP, and I'd also just come off like a big no buy, so I, was, I think I was kind of revving up in January, which is probably why January came in under the theoretical budget that was never fully committed to. In February, I started, if I had spent 184 in January, I had £16 to roll over, so I had £216 theoretically at the start of February. Now what happened in February is one of my favourite pairs of shoes broke. Um, I was out, I was out for dinner, it was really inconvenient and it just came apart. I was out with someone, we had to actually go find a shop that was open on a Sunday night, get super glue and super glue my shoe back together, it was not good times. But it was a pair of shoes, it was a nude pair of shoes that were comfy and went with everything and I was like, I need to replace these shoes. I'm going to really notice the, the absence of them in my wardrobe, which I absolutely would have done. But basically I found it really difficult to find a nude pair of shoes. Uh, and what I ended up finding were actually a pair of gold Jean Vito Rossi shoes, which I love and have worn a lot because I, I have been wearing them basically where I would have worn those nude shoes. So I have got a lot of use out of them straight away and they were on sale so I think that probably didn't help either. So they were about £300 um, which for designer shoes was as much as it was a lot of money and it was over my budget in one purchase. It was a bargain so because I needed to genuinely replace these shoes, these shoes seemed like a bargain. It just, it happened. I, I did it. I bought the shoes and I, I didn't really care that I wasn't sticking to my budget because I still hadn't really set that budget. So I bought those shoes in February plus some other bits and pieces that meant in February I spent £466.54. Then in March I spent £516.99 and again two of the two of the bigger ticket items that contributed to that and I think it is worth noting that actually a lot of what adds up to a lot of money is the things that I don't even think of as bigger ticket items. 
but two of the bigger ticket items were two bags one of them was a Lulu Guinness bag that I have wanted for a very long time but they did a bank holiday offer so they had a bit of money off it and I also had quite a chunky Lulu Guinness loyalty voucher so I got the bag for £245 and the Cambridge Satchel Company shop in Edinburgh was closing down so they had a closing down sale slash sample sale where they'd obviously taken because they were closing the shop and having a big sale anyway they took a lot of the old stock up there and were just getting rid of it at the same time. So I got the bowls bag, which again I've wanted for a really long time. And I got it for I think £120, something about that. So again, it was like the shoes and the other bag, a really good price for what it was. But it was still over my budget, you know. Um, so I'm not making excuses, but I'm, this is what happens in my mind is if it seemed like a really good buy and as you might have noticed, the totals have kind of gone up every month. So where we go completely, completely off the rails is in April when I spend £2,125.27 in one month. And again, there is one really big ticket item there. And I think actually that this is exactly what I'm saying. So the big ticket item here was something I spent £1,201.25 on. So basically I spent over a thousand pounds on all the other stuff that I bought that month, none of which even is like jumping out as being a big, big ticket item, but it all added up to a thousand pounds. The thing that I bought that was really expensive was the Red Falconetti from The Vampire's Wife. Again, it's been something I wanted for a really, really long time and matches went into liquidation. So they did, I think, 20, was it? whatever because basically after I bought it they then did a bigger discount I think I maybe bought it when it was 25% and they then went to 30% but because they were in liquidation I couldn't return it and rebuy it so I just I bought it and I got it for the price I got it at the RRP in the dresses is 1595 so again it seemed like a real bargain for what it was and it was a dress that I already own it in green I have quite a few vampires wife dresses and I really really like them and I, I love my green one and I'd said the red and the gold were like the two that I would also really like to own in the Falconetti so I got the red one because the discount was on and it seemed like a really good deal and um, but that meant I spent over £2,000 in April alone. Then in May we go higher again. In May I spent £2,759.89 and again the reason for that is that there were bargains in the scheme of life in that the vampire's wife then also went into liquidation and it just so happened they were having a closing down sale and I was in London at the time of that sale. So I got four dresses in the closing down sale plus two t-shirts. Now the four dresses were basically all between sort of five and six hundred pounds each so that counts for the majority of what I bought. I also got this necklace that I'm wearing actually so that was £177.96 because I bought it in Dublin so I got it in euros so that's what actually came out my bank in pounds for it. Um, but everything else is a fairly sort of low ticket item price wise but obviously buying four dresses even at sample sale clo or closing down sale prices that adds up. So that's what I've recorded that I've spent. And as you can imagine with the fact I've stopped recording it, that means in June and July I went even more wild. So I am definitely at a point where I need to put the brakes on. I, this has been like, I didn't make this clear enough, I didn't put the fence posts up properly at the start of the year, I didn't announce it, I didn't outline it, I didn't make rules. And this has been like a rolling boulder that started and it's just got quicker and quicker and quicker and it has smashed through the fence posts that I didn't actually put in properly in the first place. So, I've spent a ludicrous amount of money this year and I need to stop. And the only reason I'm not like basically crying in this video telling you that I'm not declaring bankruptcy is because I've had those years of no buys and low buys behind me that has meant I've had a financial cushion behind me because that spending nearly £3,000 in the month of May plus whatever I've spent in June and July which I don't even I don't even want to write it down and face it is how bad whatever I've spent in June and July adds up to like I couldn't afford to spend that in one month usually like I, I don't make enough money that that is a reasonable amount of money for me to be spending in one month having just spent over £2,000 a month before on clothes and beauty stuff and shoes and whatever like absolutely not that's that's not my life love it if it was but it's not so the only reason I've even been able to do that 
this year has been because of my previous years and the fact that I have had the brakes on in previous years that has given me that little bit of leeway that has allowed me to do that this year. Now ultimately we are where we are. I think part of where my issues have come from is that yes there's been this really good deals on right now and if I, if I don't get it right now that deal is going to go. You know like with the Cambridge Satch Company and the Vampire's Wife those have been closing down sales. Get it now it forever hold your peace. That's triggered some of it but I think also what's happened is that I have really learned over the past couple of years what I really like because I've learned when I've not been buying things and I've seen things I know what I've gotten over and what I've forgotten about in time and I know what has really stuck and that's the thing this year is that the things that I have bought the really expensive things that have contributed to the majority of my spending the big ticket items they are all things I love genuinely I if I could go back remake those decisions I'd probably make the same decisions as the honest and slightly ugly truth because I love those things and I have been in a position where I've been able to buy them because I've stopped before but I also know that this has got worse every single month and that is because I have got back into the habit and alongside all those big ticket items as I was saying are all the smaller things that I have just bought that don't even stick in my head. like if you were to ask me what I've bought this year those big ticket items would come off the top of my head love them remember buying them, so so pleased with them, you know, wearing them, using them, loving them, all of that jazz. But like the skincare or the makeup or you know, the, the shoes, whatever I've bought that's not been those big ticket items, I probably couldn't rhyme you them off the top of my head. So I, I shouldn't really have been buying them. But I think I was kind of blinded by the fact I was buying them because they were such small items in comparison to the chunks of money I was spending on things that I was like, yeah, I can completely justify spending this because I know that I love this. But that also minimised the the amount of care and time and thought that I was putting into with the other things that I was buying, which have added up to quite a considerable chunk of money on their own. So I need to not be discounting those purchases. But in terms of those big purchases, I do love everything I've bought. I think I've bought quite sensibly, not financially sensibly, but in terms of what I've actually bought. It's things I've really loved. It's things I've worn already. It's things that I am using. And I don't regret the fact that I own any of them. If I could go back and be like, can you take this back and give me that money back? There's none of them, none of those big ticket items that I would do that with. As much as I've overspent, I do love them all. However, it's not sustainable for me to keep going the way that I've been going. So as much as I think I have improved sh my shopping habits overall, in that I don't have any regret purchases this year, and that's the really hard thing is I think, in the past I've gone on spending binges for emotional reasons. That's not what's happened this year. I've not been buying in an emotionally responsive way. I've just been buying because I really like the stuff that's in front of me. So it's not been those like emotional binges I used to go on where actually three weeks later I'd been like if I could go on and do that I totally would because I didn't buy that item because I loved it. I bought it because I was in a bad headspace or I'd had a bad day at work or like I was excited about something else and I just get carried away. Whether it was positive or negative, I bought far too much in the past because of an emotional response. That hasn't happened. I've definitely improved so much of that kind of stuff, but clearly I can still go wild. And this sort of inbuilt ability to control that that I thought was happening is not happening. I am always, I think, going to need to be someone who, if I'm going to keep control of my spending, needs to be doing projects or tracking or whatever in a way that is very actively engaged with it not just someone who thinks they can just keep control of what's going on in their bank without really investigating it and thinking about it. I feel like there are magical people out there who will just kind of look at their bank and go oh, I should probably cut back or like oh I'm good to go and they don't have to think about it in the context of what they've spent you know overall recently or not that they don't have to think about it in the context, but they, they actively think about it in the context without thinking they're thinking about it in the context. Does that make sense? Somebody who'll be like, oh, I know I bought three jumpers last month, so I'm not going to buy another one this month just because the money is there. Whereas I'd be like, well, do you know what? Like, I like this one too, and it's in my budget, so I can go. Except I don't obviously even go if it's in my budget. But if I was even thinking about it, I would still even actively be focused on 
what the budget was meant to be, not whether I really need what I'm buying. Does that make sense? But anyway, that's probably a whole other problem. The point of this video is that for August, as far as buying stuff goes, I'm out. I'm on a no buy. And you know, it's funny, I'm filming this on the 4th of August, so I'm three days, three full days on day four into this. And I actually feel like a weight has lifted already that I'm just like, right, I'm not even thinking about it. I'm not looking at stuff. I'm not having to make decisions about whether I'm committing to it or not. I'm just not getting anything. I actively feel already like I'm like, I'm back in my safe space. I can't live the rest of my life on a no buy. I do think I probably need to do a budget at some point and that's why I'm just seeing August. Like I'm just putting the brakes on for a month and then I'm going to see how I feel at the end of August. I think, I'm, if I'm honest, I foresee myself probably doing about a three month no buy here and then seeing if I could do a budget maybe like November and December. That's where I think this is going to go. But I'm going to see how it feels. I'm going to take it month by month. But for August, we are absolutely on a no buy. By no buy, what I mean is nothing new. I could buy replacements as always, but if I'm honest, I don't foresee myself needing any replacements in August, so I don't think that's even going to be an issue. And what I'm also doing here is that this is not just that I can't go buy any new like fashion or beauty items other than replacements. It's that I am also not going to be spending, I've got some birthday money to spend and I've also got quite a lot of boots points. In the past when I've done no buys, because that's not been me spending my own money, I've been okay with that, but I am putting the brakes on completely. Like I just don't even want to be involved in the behaviour of shopping this month. So I'm not even going to be spending any money that is not mine or any points or any vouchers, nothing at all. We are just for the month of August, we are just not engaging. So that is the intention for August and I'm putting it out here so that I'm telling you guys about it, I'm making it official and I'm sticking to it. No buy activated. What I also want to do is get back into my budget for my life. So last, was it last year? Was it the year before? Anyway, one year, I think it was last year, I was on my no buy in terms of like fashion and beauty things but I had also introduced a budget concept that I was trying to stick to to control how much money I was spending on other things so things like takeaways, books which I've always allowed myself under my no buy, socialising, going out, eh, spending on beauty treatments, things like that because what I definitely found was that at one point when I was on my no buy I started spending a lot of money on other things that I might not have been spending had I been spending that money on shoes and dresses and makeup. So what I didn't want was for this the money saved by the no buy to transfer to spending more on other things. I wanted to try and start saving money as well as breaking my shopping habits and the amount that I was shopping. Now I picked a bit of a stupid month to decide to start this because August is really really busy for me. I've got something on every single weekend. This was probably a terrible time to decide I need to start reining it in. So I'm not going with a super strict budget. I'm going with a budget of £500. That is not what I would like my average monthly budget to be because I do intend to take the budget through every single month now towards the end of the year. But I have to be realistic in that I have a lot of commitments in August. It's the Fringe Festival so I'm going through to Edinburgh quite a number of times this month. Um, and I've just, it's like between like birthdays and things that have already been booked in well in advance, this just isn't a month where I know I'm going to be able to save a lot of money in terms of going out and socialising. So I'm putting a cap on it at £500, still quite a lot of money but I think I would probably spend more than that if I wasn't putting the cap on it. So I will just quickly, I'll put up a blank copy of the spreadsheet for the way that I track my budget and that is the spreadsheet that I am going to be using to track how much I spend in August. So the things that I will be tracking are beauty services. So that's like my hair, my nails. I'm also getting laser hair removal at the moment. So those things will all be under beauty services. Beauty service replacement items isn't really something I've been dabbling in a lot recently. Like for a while I was buying my own hair dye rather than getting my hair done at the hairdressers. Kind of just damaged my hair. So came to the conclusion, not worth it. I actually moved hairdresser, I can't really remember if I told you guys about it. Um, so I used to go in the city centre, I was paying about £200 basically. I know to people in London that probably seems quite average but that, that was quite a lot of money and it was quite a lot of money out of my budget every month. So I now go somewhere that's in a suburb, it's a lot cheaper so I just decided to move salon rather than 
trying to do it myself. So beauty service replacement items, not a category I see a lot of money being spent in but we'll keep it there on the off chance anything raises its head. Beauty replacements, so mainly skincare replacements, as I said I don't really foresee there being any this month but it is something that I do allow myself to buy if I genuinely need it so it's on the spreadsheet. Socialising, self-explanatory, eating out, going out with friends, work lunches, very specific category that is when I don't take my lunch to work and I buy meal deals and it feels like it's like oh it's five pounds it's seven pounds it's not a lot of money in one go and then by the end of the month it can be quite a lot of money so that is something that I have definitely noticed that I have been falling back into the habit of is not taking food with me and buying food like five days a week at work which all adds up so I want to nip that in the bud this month as well. Experiences so that's like theatre tickets or I mean mainly theatre tickets is what I see it being this month. Things that I go out and experience. And then books and entertainment, so that's any books that I buy which I do allow myself to buy but I do want them to come within my budget. And entertainment is, th that kind of sounds like it could be experiences because I suppose theatre is arguably entertainment but entertainment for me what I really mean by that is like digital entertainment. So that's really if I bought like an audiobook or a film on Amazon to listen to or watch straight away. Uh, or if I bought a DVD that would be entertainment I suppose as well it's not necessarily just online but I feel like I can be quite dangerous with the online stuff if it's like audiobooks, ebooks or watching films online and whatever that you're paying for not because I've got Netflix or whatever so that's coming out of my direct debits that's fine that's worked in so it's things that I'm paying over on top of Netflix for uh, which I feel like because you don't get anything physical I can get quite click happy with those things so they need to be tracked. So those are the things that I will be tracking what I spend on in the month of August. The aim is to spend £500 or less. In terms of my beauty treatments I am just over £100 for my laser, my hair will be just under £100 and my nails are about the £50 mark so that's £250 straight away really but I feel like I've kind of committed to this laser now and I'm like well there's no point in giving it up. So I'm just going to need to, to work it into the budget basically. So I feel like that is, that's 200, that's almost half my budget straight away which leaves me £250 for everything else. So hopefully, fingers crossed, it's going to be doable. I know some days are going to be more expensive than other days. I actually had like quite an expensive day yesterday. My friend and I went through to the Fringe in Edinburgh so uh, and we were through all day so we bought two meals while we were out there. So we saw multiple shows. It was what it was and I knew that, that was going to be an expensive day so I feel like I pulled the 500 as my number because I feel like that allows me that leeway and then I know like when I go to the fringe next weekend I'm just going for one show so I'm probably not going to eat out while I'm over there. I'll just like go see my show and come back. I might buy like some juice or whatever for the train but I'm not going to be buying a full day's worth of food um, because I'm not going to be there all day and whatever so it's not that I'm going to spend that every single day but I know there's going to be a couple of really expensive days. So £500 need to come in under it this month, needs to happen and an absolute no buy. That is the plan for August so I'm putting it out there, I'm keeping myself accountable, I'm making it official, I'm telling you, I'm putting it out into the universe, that is what's happening and I'm not going to say wish me luck because it's, it's going to happen. This isn't a thing about luck, this is about my choices and my commitments and I'm making them. So thank you very much for watching this video, I hope you've enjoyed it. And I will see you in my next one. Bye.